Hi, welcome to Rasty and Tong's Excellent Guide to Immunology at SGU. My name is Rasty. My name is Tong. And we decided to make this because uh, immunology we know is something that's confusing. It was very confusing to me. And uh, I can remember walking into class and feeling like it was like a fifth year Russian class and the teacher saying Grink Spinks Nike, which I later found out was the title of the first Beatles movie in Portuguese. So you can uh, appreciate how lost I was. But let's jump right into it. We have the immune system here. And the immune system has uh, an innate part, which you're born with, almost like your sense of smelling or sense of sight or sense of hearing. And that includes, uh, as examples, these cells. The macrophages uh, can, are phagocytic cells, and they also are antigen-presenting cells. The dendritic cells, we know, are the best antigen-presenting cells. The natural killer cells are involved with the uh, eradication of viruses, and mast cells release histamine and are involved with inflammation. Now over on this side, we have the adaptive cells. The adaptive cells are kind of like the immune skills that you develop over a lifetime, almost like your sense of, uh, or your, pardon me, ability to sing, or your ability to dance, or play hockey. And under the adaptive, we have two types of cells. We have the T cells, and down here we have the B cells. The T cells have two subtypes, the CD4, which help B cells make antibodies. They also produce IFN gamma, which activates macrophages, and they are involved with the MHC2 protein. The CD8 cells directly kill virus-infected cells, and the MHC, uh, they're also involved with the MHC1 protein. The B cells, their sole uh, job in life is to make antibodies. Now you may ask, what happens, okay? You know, we, we, we get a bug inside our body and uh, want to know what happens to it. Well, I think the thing to appreciate is that every day you have so many bugs inside your body. They get in your mucosa, of your mouth, of your eyes, and your ears, under your fingernails, and cuts in your skin everywhere. So in one example here, the uh, macrophage comes and it engulfs it, okay? and it phagocytizes it. So it's going to take it and digest it and chop it all up and inside you're going to have little pieces of this bug that was in there. Well the, the macrophage is going to say to itself, you know what, this thing shouldn't be in there so I'm going to call out the ground troops, I'm going to alert the army and da 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 da. So it takes a little piece that was inside and displays it and that we're going to call antigen. Well we know that the, dend the dendritic cell is such a good uh, antigen presenting cell. The dendritic cell, we'll just make a D, can on its little receptor, it can display the whole bug. So now the dendritic cell has the bug displayed and I'm going to now carry you into the part of our little discussion on immunology here that we call the money, the money slide. And this happens in the lymph node and spleen. Now I want you to take your immuno gold sheets that you get off sunshines and, they, and number them 1 to 15. On the bottom of page 7, this is where we're going to explain now. The dendritic cell, and you can see it here, and A is for antigen, the dendritic cell comes and presents it to a CD4 plus T cell. Now there has to be three interactions in between the two so that the process of calling out the army can happen. The dendritic cell comes with, with three markers. It has a CD8086, which the first aid book refers to as B7. It also has the MHC2 with the antigen on it, which we have right back over here. The dendritic cell also has a CD40. Now that CD40 matches up with the CD40L on the CD4 plus T cell. The MHC2 matches up with the TCR. And the CD8086, or B7, also matches up with the CD28. Now Tong's going to tell you what happens after that half, after those two uh, meet up. Basically what happens after this is the CD4 plus T cell is going to release IL interleukin-2, which is IL-2, and that's going to cause clonal expansion, which a lot of Th0 T cells is going to be generated. For simplicity uh, purpose, I'm going to refer to Th0, which is the same inside in your notes, and Th1 and Th2, just by To, T1, and T2. Okay. So what happens now is the To cells are going to generate th three common interleukin uh, to this process. And those are the IL-2, IL-4, IFN gamma. If it produces uh, a higher concentration of the IL, oh, sorry, not IL, IFN gamma, it's going to go to T1 row. If it generates a higher concentration of the IL-4, then it's going to go to T2 row. Up here, as you can see, this is, these are some of the other uh, cytokines that is, are produced by the T1 cells, IL-2, IFN gamma, TNF, TNF. 
Down here for the T2 cells, you have the IL4, 5, 6, 10, 13, TGF, beta. And with all of this happening, you gotta have some kind of control within the, the system. So there's some kind of regulatory uh, mechanism going on. I'm gonna first talk, uh, refer to the uh, two cells uh, that's outside of this. Those are the natural killer cells and the mast cells. But I'll first talk about the natural killer cells. What the natural killer cell does is it gets activated by the dendritic cell by the IL, sorry, marker switch first, IL-12. After that, the natural killer cell is going to release IFN gamma, and the IFN gamma is going to generate more of the T1 cell. And with, the, with this happening, it's going to negatively inhibit the production of T2 cell with, keep in mind, that happens with IFN gamma. On the other hand, down here with the mast cell, it upregulates the T2 uh, cell by the production of IL-4. And with this happening, at the same time it's going to negatively inhibit the T1 uh, T1 cell with production of IL-4. At the same time, you have 10, IL-10 down here in the T2 cell. That is going to travel all the way over here and it is going to negatively inhibit the production of IL-12 which is going to negatively inhibit the production of IFN gamma, which is going to negatively inhibit the production of T1 cell. In, indirectly. In, in, indirectly. 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 Because there is no IFN gamma. Yes. Very good. I'm with you. I think I understand so far, Tong. Keep talking. You're doing a good job. Well, thank you. Do you like my eyes? Yeah, that's pretty good. I like the purple eyes. Keep in mind that with the production of T1 cell types, it's going to kill viruses, um, intracellular bacteria, cellular bacteria, parasites, also fungi. On the other hand, down here, you have this one does uh, um, the the four and five really are involved with the production of antibodies. Antibodies, and then the type two are with the extracellular bacteria. Extracellular bacteria. Okay, so just to kind of wrap this up, what happens is after the IL-456, all the type 2 cytokines are produced, they uh, help the, in the production of antibodies and also the uh, differentiation of those antibodies into different types. Okay, so the antibodies are produced and as we go up here, we can see the B cells under the direction of IL-2, 4, and 5 on page 7 and page 12 of the gold sheets help with the production of plasma cells. And plasma cells are kind of the mothers that release antibodies as their baby. Now, one IgM antibody bound to a bug can activate the classical complement pathway, whereas it takes 600 to 1,000 of IgG. And it talks about all the different antibodies and their roles on page four. Antibodies, we know, they can on their own neutralize toxins and viruses. But if you have a bug and it has IgM stuck to it, that actually gets complement all fired up. And as you know, complement, this would be the classical pathway, eventually forms the MAC complex and that kills the bacteria. But there are so many antibodies that they can go through and look for all the pieces of antigen that was originally displayed on that dendritic cell and kill it. So once again, my name is Rasty. My name is Tom. And we hope this has been very helpful as uh, you should take and write out the money, uh, the, the money sheet a few times. And you've been watching Rasty and Tong's Excellent Guide to Immunology at SGU. Thanks. Good luck.